Starting out with 3D graphics and animation, you begin to compare 3D programs to pick and which one would help you kick off your journey and make it as smooth as possible without frustration. Among these, you might consider starting out with Blender. And you might be wondering, is Blender easy to learn? Is it gonna enable me to make good 3D art and art that I can share? And is it gonna help me start a career in CGI without trouble? In this video, we're gonna evaluate every aspect of Blender for beginners and I'll list all the cons and pros of choosing Blender as a starting 3D program to help you make the decision with as little bias as possible and being as subjective as possible. First of all, Blender is a free and open source 3D program that is used to make CG art in a variety of kinds ranging from 3D animation, motion graphics, sculpting, 2D frame by frame animation, VFX and so on. It was founded in 1995 by Tom Rosendahl, and it was made free and open source in 2002, and ever since, it's been growing exponentially. It saw major overhauls to the user interface and gained a huge momentum in the 3D industry, especially with the major release of the version 2.8. Today it enjoys a very wide user base, a very active community of artists and developers in addition to contributors from major companies like Nvidia, Adobe and so on. Now that you know what Blender is, we're gonna explore the most important things about the software and how it can help you in your journey in the computer graphics industry. So first of all, is Blender really easy to learn? The answer to this question can be subjective and it would depend on your mental abilities, your speed of adapting concepts and your prior experience. But to be completely subjective, yes, Blender is known to have a slightly steeper learning curve compared to other major 3D programs. That is to say that most users find it daunting to grasp all the shortcuts needed to perform simple modeling tasks, which will frustrate most users. But on the other hand, the outcome is gonna be worth it. As I said, due to the fact that Blender relies heavily on shortcuts, it's gonna make the modeling process less time consuming, which is good. Because as soon as you adapt to Blender's workflow, your learning page will pick up speed. So generally speaking, Blender can seem a bit hard at first, but it gets easier the more time and effort you spend with it. As a beginner, you will find yourself constantly looking for tutorials and guides online to follow. Thankfully, Blender has an abundance of tutorials and courses on a variety of platforms, both paid and free. To name a few, Android Price YouTube channel has a series that is known all around the Blender community, which is the Donut Tutorial series, of course, which will guide you through the important basics of Blender, including modeling, texturing, UV wrapping, composition, and so on. We also on this channel have a series highlighting the best tutorials out there related to Blender. You can check it out if you want to. Other beginner-friendly YouTube channels include CG Cookie, Ian Hubert, Ian Sculpts, Gleb Alexandrov, and many more. Blender also a very, very illustrated documentation that's up to date and contains all the information you need in a detailed manner if you prefer the self-teaching method. And in case you get stuck trying to figure out something, there is a very active community that spans across multiple platforms ranging from BlenderArtist.org forum to Stack Exchange Division for Blender, all of which provide valuable support and feedback. So in terms of learning resources, Blender has an abundance of those who want to get started to make the learning curve less steeper. Now talking about Blender's interface, admittedly, it is found to be a little bit intimidating at first. Considering that Blender is a generalist 3D program that tends to stretch across multiple fields of CGI, which makes it packed with a lot of buttons and menus. However, those menus tend to be intuitively organized and stacked in relation to each other so that the user doesn't get confused or lost in piles of incoherent parameters and options. And this brings us to the next point, keyboard shortcuts. Blender is known to be highly reliant on keyboard shortcuts for various modeling operations, making the workflow snappy and practical, which in turn can be daunting to learn as a starting point. But once you familiarize yourself with that, they will become a muscle memory and you will find that your workflow has gotten a lot better and faster, which in my opinion is a positive point about Blender. Now, to address the elephant in the room, which is a subject that caused a lot of controversy and is still a matter of debate, which is whether Blender is industry standard, meaning is Blender used in major production studios and in the movie industry. After all, you won't want to invest time and effort in a program that won't lend you an income in the long run. Personally, I think that Blender admittedly is still the underdog in comparison to major names in the industry such as ZBrush and Houdini, maybe also Max, Maya and Cinema 4D. 
which is due to the fact that these are specialized programs tailored to do specific one thing, and they are excellent at it, whereas Blender is a 3D suite that can do a multitude of things. Moreover, these programs have long been adopted by production studios and are highly integrated into their creation pipelines, and it would cost a lot of time and effort and resources to convert to anything else such as Blender, even when they know Blender is gonna be better for their work, to showcase how difficult that is. However, in the recent few years, Blender development saw a huge boost that made it a lot easier to adopt, namely an overhaul of the interface and the introduction of real-time rendering using the EV render engine, in addition to Intel denoising technology and so on. As a result, a growing number of studios are starting to incorporate Blender into their pipelines or even rely on it completely for their production, making Blender an appealing option for artists who are looking to start their careers in CGI including 3D modeling and animation, architecture visualization, creating movies, video games, and much more. Also, a very important point you must consider is the system requirements for Blender, and assessing your system resources to determine whether it's gonna run smoothly on your computer. Blender is known to be very light on resources in comparison to other 3D programs. To put it into perspective, the whole package comes with less than 300 megabytes installer and would run decently on any quad-core CPU that's 10 years old or less. But if your hardware is extremely limited, you have the option of running Blender 2.79 and is still able to produce quite decent graphics. Moreover, Blender enables you to render animations on its real-time rendering engine EV, which can render multiple frames per minute depending on the complexity of your scene making it a viable option for rendering on limited resources. Or if you don't want to compromise on quality, Blender comes with advanced denoising technology that works in union with cycles to cut down rendering times with no compromises. All of this makes Blender a better candidate for someone who intends to dabble in 3D without having to pay much for hardware equipment. Moreover, Blender being a free and open source program will encourage you to start learning without having to pay for software licenses as opposed to most 3D programs that cost quite a lot of money, and this can be in monthly fees or perpetual licenses. So in terms of cost, Blender is quite suitable for a beginner, and it is highly recommended. In the eyes of some people, Blender might be a newcomer to the 3D industry, and it has been considered a hobbyist program for many years, but recently, it saw major changes that made it a lot more appealing to beginners and professionals alike, despite the reputation of being complicated and hard to learn, which is starting to change recently. Adding to that, the abundance of learning materials and the supportive active community that helps artists through their careers and provide them with feedback that is essential to their development and advancement. So in my opinion, Blender can be the go-to program for beginners considering a multitude of factors that I mentioned, and it has low system requirements combined with the fact that it is a free software that helps artists to learn and create things without additional costs. And the fact that many major companies are joining the development fund recently proves that Blender indeed is gaining considerable momentum in the industry and is soon becoming an important name along giant programs such as Houdini and ZBrush, which means more and more jobs and positions for people who know Blender. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. You can also check some of our previous videos. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.